All right, guys. I know about this story. I've seen the video on TikTok, but we're gonna react to it. Maybe we'll get some um some more info about the case, guys, because this is a wild one. Let's check it out. Yeah, hopefully there's commentary on this video, guys, because it's quite gruesome, man. It's quite gruesome. Yeah. A cop realizes fa the father executed the kids. Uh, it sounds terrible, right, guys? It's because it is. It is. What the heck? What could possess a parent to take their own child's life? And just how twisted would they have? Three of them, by the way. Oh it's my gosh! Only consider such a horror. Wait, I didn't. I, I didn't know. Why is the wife still like? Uh, I, I thought I thought he executed the the wife, but maybe she uh he let her uh, live, guys. That's good. But to. I hope she's not on there, like, pleading to, you know, pleading for help, guys. Planet for months. This is the ongoing case of Chad Doerman, father of three, who executed his kids for no apparent reason. Okay, that's good. We do have commentary. On a seemingly ordinary afternoon on the 15th of June, 2023, police were called out to Claremont County, Ohio, following two 911 calls from passerby who had been approached by a terrified girl on the road. Nine on one. Where's your emergency? Um, I am. I'm. Uh, there's a girl uh, running down the street. Like her stepfather is killing everyone in her family. Um, it's on the corner of uh, where there's a body shop and the fire department. Do you know what road this is? Okay. What? He lives right next to a fire department, and he's doing that. Oh my goodness. That's all bad. That's all bad, bro. What's your name? Get into the fire department. What's your name? My. Do you know what road this is? Laura Lindell Road. what? It's Laura Lindell Road. Earlier that afternoon, Doberman came home from work early and asked his wife to join him in the master Got a pool in the backyard and stuff. Her ...bedroom for a nap with their three sons, Chase, Hunter, and Clayton. While his stepdaughter was in the next room watching TV, Doberman suddenly took out a rifle and shot his four-year-old Hunter twice in the head. Dude, what is wrong with this dude? The girl who was just 12 years old rushed in to find her mother trying to protect the injured son from Doerman, who fought viciously and even bit his wife to get the boy. In a desperate move, his wife grabbed the rifle. This resulted in her being shot in the hand and forced to drop her son into Doerman's line of fire. I asked, her, I asked her to get in the car with me, and she said she couldn't leave her family. While the mother fought for her little boy's life, the young girl told her remaining brothers to run as far as they could and fled the scene beside him. The seven-year-old Clayton made it 300 feet into a nearby field before being gunned down from behind by his father. Dude, what the heck? Wow, man. So he's straight up just doing all that, man? That's terrible. Let him run a little, like, and then just executed him while he was running. Doerman then went on for his stepdaughter, who was attempting to carry her last brother, three-year-old Chase, to safety. When he caught up to him, he demanded she put him down and try to fire at him. Fortunately, his gun was jammed. Now separated, the last son ran back to the house where he was caught by Doerman, while the stepdaughter escaped to the nearby fire department to seek help. But she, I think she ran to the fire department. Dang, he ran back to the house? I would not. I mean, but he's a kid, guys, so... You know, that's all, that's all he knows is, like, you know, his parents, are like, where, where, like, you know, his parents, like, you know, that's all he think, thinks his parents are just to help him, and they didn't there, guys. You know, sadly. So she went to the Sadly, he's doing the exact opposite, bro. 
I don't know what's it wrong with this guy. Fire station, what did she look like? Did she say anything about a baby? I, I don't know about no baby. She said she just couldn't leave her family. Officers arrived on scene at approximately 4 p.m. to discover the shooter, 32-year-old Chad Doberman, sitting calmly by the door. He's unresponsive to commands provided by law enforcement, and so the officers approached the home. Dang, I didn't see the rifle sitting right there. Home. Show us your hands now! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up now! Stand up! Stand Got the dog defending the house. Not a time for the dog to be around. Upon inspection, the officers are confronted with a scene straight out of a horror movie. On the ground lies a mother, screaming beside her children's bodies while they're- Dang, she, she's also shot and stuff? Like, well- wow. Her father watches, utterly emotionless. Get the EMS over here. Doberman's attitude is unnatural. Here, he can be heard telling officers that he means no harm and has not consumed any alcohol or drugs. He assures them he's not insane and even kindly warns them about his dog. Oh, I remember that. What's going on, man? Hey, are you copying all this? Can I roll over? I ain't gonna hurt you. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hurt nobody. You got anything on you? No, I ain't got nothing, man. Phone, that's it. I ain't mad. I ain't, I ain't nothing. Well, well, he's not gonna be using that phone for a while, guys. This guy is completely messed up. Like, I don't know what, what this guy was thinking, bro. Just make sure that dog don't come out. I don't think he'll bite you. Just don't reach for him and try to grab him and pet him. He won't bite you. His claim that there's nothing going on is a shocking contrast to his wife's desperate cries that can be heard repeatedly throughout the footage from the crime scene. I know, right? He, he must have forgot about that. What is he thinking? What is he thinking? Yelling. 63, we're 21. No, Have EMS on. respond over here. here. What do I do? You're clear they're being advised. My life for me. My life. There were nine shots fired in total that afternoon, with one of the boys shot once and the other two shot four times each. Strangely, he made no attempt to murder his wife or stepdaughter, despite knowing that they alerted the authorities. The only one else inside. Dang, only murdered his own kids? What the? Why, why would... I, I'm, I'm speechless here, guys. I, I don't know what to say because... It's just so heinous what he's doing, man. Like he had a plan just to do that to, to all his kids. Why? Inside the house? What? You're the only one else inside yeah, the house. Yeah, yeah. Sit down right uh, here. My, my daughter, she ran over to the fire department. Sit down. Uh, it's my stepdaughter. Put him in the cage. Can you get the wallet out of my back pocket? Shut up, dude. You have the right to remain silent. Can you use it? Doberman disturbingly has no reaction as he marched past their bodies by the police and seems oddly comfortable with the officers apprehending him. But after one night in police custody, reality finally started to sink in. Visibly distressed, Doberman refuses to wear the jumpsuit provided and resists multiple officers as they fit his handcuffs, preparing him for his first arraignment with a judge in court. There he will hear the charges brought up. Dang, even the corrections officers have body cams, guys. I did not expect something like that to happen. I mean, maybe just for this case. But that's cool, that's cool. Definitely, you know, it helps both parties here. Helps jail abuse, helps the officer, safety, all sorts of stuff, guys. That's cool. I think body cams should be standard. ...against them for the first time, and be faced with both media and prosecutors, a realization which hits them suddenly outside the courtroom. Now, Dad, look at me. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. <laughs> no, I, I know. Just take a deep breath for me, okay? Do you think it's like a psychotic episode he went through or something, guys? 
Because he, when when reality sets in quite quickly when you're in the jail, so I'll tell you what. I'm gonna have your public defender come back and talk to you, okay? And then we're gonna go out and we're gonna do your hearing. I need, are, can you hear me? Do you need a second? Take a deep breath. With Doberman's former bravery gone, he's clearly petrified and struggling to withhold his panic. Once he regained control of his emotions, an officer explains the process of the initial hearing. He's warned about the media and told to pay attention to the judge alone. There's media out there, okay? When you walk out, you'll see a piece of black tape on the floor. All I need from you is to stand on that piece of black tape, face the judge, the judge only, and just listen. They'll say that you have the right to remain silent, and I advise you to, to use that, okay? Because everything in there is recorded. So I want you, again, just to stand there, look at the... Media and everything, guys. Judge, judge only, don't turn to the media, don't turn to anybody in the audience that you may know. Listen to the judge and let your um, public defender do the talking for you, okay? If you have any questions for us. It's clear that Doerman's struggling to pay attention. Well, when you're in a custody that you can't really uh, uh, cha uh, change what you're doing or anything, but uh, your whole outlook on life changes drastically, guys. Drastically. He may even be experiencing an episode of dissociation, a defense mechanism in which the mind emotionally detaches from its surroundings as a response. Guys, I used to dis—I used to take disassociatives, like uh, back in the day. So I know all about disassociation. Response to intense feelings of stress or trauma. It's not uncommon for criminals in Doberman's position to experience dissociative episodes. This might explain his lack of emotion at the crime scene. After being numb for so long, his nervous system is now being flooded with all the feelings he was holding back. Doerman arrives in the courtroom. The prosecutor lists his crimes in detail, describing this as a case of unspeakable horror. Judge, I asked the- No doubt, no doubt. Uh, just seeing the body cam footage, we can definitely tell that. Court is setting this bond. To just begin to imagine their fear. This was the man that every day they woke up looking to for protection, love, guidance in all things. The man they trust more than any other person on earth. The person they rely upon to keep them safe from harm. Pretty much that. <laughs> He can't really talk to the public, or he might, he might say something in the courtroom. He was their world, he was their guardian, and he Because we don't know a, a reason why he did it. ...executed them in cold blood. We know that from his admission. According to a statement from the murderer himself, it's revealed that this act of violence was not an accident. It was a calculated execution. To make things even more... Well, that thing, that, that's one of the dumbest plans I've ever heard, though, man. More disturbing, Judge, this was no haphazard act. Again, by his own admission, he planned. Don't ever try to plan something like this, guys. You know what I mean? Silly, silly, silly. Silly, just straight up stupid, not gonna lie. The events of this day. This did not happen on a whim. Doerman had allegedly been planning to kill his sons for months, ever since way back to October 2022. It's also reported that he hadn't slept for three to four days prior. Dang, bro, what the heck? Yeah, just one of the stupidest plans. You know, he could have did... He could have planned to something, do something good, like start a business. You know, help out the community, but instead he plans this. I'm kind of sick. Kind of plan is that? Prior to the incident, what continues to confuse both detectives and reporters alike is why he did it. What motive would a father, even an abusive one, have to execute all three of his own children? He's confessed to what I believe is the worst crime, at least I hope, that I'll see in my lifetime. I hope it's the worst fact pattern that ever comes before this court. At this point, Doerman is visibly crying, which should suggest remorse. 
but until now he hasn't seemed capable of such an emotion. His vicious character has been confirmed by neighbors, who described him as a man with a temper, who was constantly heard yelling, and was known to be cruel to his wife. He was just a very angry man. Like, he just was always yelling at his wife and his kids, and you just really don't pay no attention to stuff like that, and then this happened. This test Sad, bro. Sad, bro. Testimony certainly aligns with Doberman's criminal record. As the prosecutor notes, he had one previous charge of domestic violence in 2010. As his prior record goes, Judge, it is fairly minimal. He was charged with domestic violence in 2010. <clears throat> he is not, to my knowledge, on probation community control. However, Doberman's father, Keith, had actually defended his son's character. He went on record saying, That wasn't Chad standing at the arraignment. I could tell in his eyes, he's hollow inside. Keith himself had no explanation for the killings and said his son simply snapped. Judge, the facts of this case are hopefully like no other we will ever see. When this case gets indicted in the court of common pleas, I am certain that a no bond hearing will be held and I would hope that would be granted. But at this point, at this juncture, we're going to ask this court to... Hey, I, I think it's a general public's uh, well-being if there is a no bond granted on this case. Not gonna lie. Issue a bond we've never asked for before. I'm gonna ask for a bond of twenty million dollars. I hope I never need to request such a bond again. The prosecutor requested his bail to be set at a staggering twenty million dollars a tactic to ensure he would appear before court at his appointed trial date and that he would not be released from police custody before that time. A judge will typically set a bail bond at an astronomical level in cases such as these, where the defendant is charged with a violent crime or deemed a flight risk. It's quite evident here that Doerman has been determined as both. While the facts of this case are continuing to take shape, the prosecutor has gone on record, stating that he sees this as a death penalty case. As such, he wants Doerman executed for his crimes, a fitting punishment for a man who brutally executed his own sons. But these are men and women with families, children, feelings, emotions. Dang, bro. Straight up wants a death penalty on... Not some automaton performing a delegated function for people. It's not yet confirmed what Doerman's sentence will be. But one thing's for sure, this man needs to pay the ultimate price for his inhumane crimes. Totally inhumane, one of the most inhumane things ever. The fact that children ran away and dad chased them is absolutely heartbreaking, I know, right? Can't imagine how horrifying this must have been. Your father, a man you trust taking your life. My heart goes out to all the victims involved. I know, right? I know, right? Alright guys, like the video, check it out in the description, uh, pretty heinous what he did, uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, and do all my reactions live on Twitch, so if you want to come through, say hi, you're more welcome, and I'll see you guys next one, okay? Pretty sick, pretty sick, this guy's, uh, not a good dude, later guys.